Oh. Yes. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be showing you, I need to stop flipping timber around. <laughs> how to construct, how to cut a mortise and tenon joint entirely by hand. No machines whatsoever. So, let's get going. So of course, starting with our two blank bits of timber, let's get in close and see what tools we need for this. Right, tools we need for this joint. A mortise gauge, a marking gauge, a marking knife, a mortise chisel, a mallet, a wider chisel, a Buddha pen, more on that later, a square, and a rip tenon saw. And to make this joint a little bit easier, you could also get a crosscut saw to cut the cheeks off the tenon. And for actually refining the tenon, two tools that you could get here are also a router plane, or you could get a shoulder plane. Those will help you out a little bit, but not completely necessary. I will show you how to use those later on. So let's get in close and mark these out. Right, let's get the rubbish out of the way. Okay, right, so we've obviously got the two components here and these are different thicknesses, as you may see here. So we've got a bit of beech, which we're gonna be cutting the mortise into. So the mortise is the part with the hole in it. And on this bit of ash here, we're going to be cutting the tenon. So the first thing we're gonna do here is mark our face sides and face edges. And because these are different thicknesses, what's important to know here is whatever side we put our face side on, that is going to be ending up flush. So if we put the face side on here, it means that the component's gonna sit flush on that side. Whereas if we put our face side on the back, we're gonna get a small step here on the front. So depending on what you're doing, you might want that joint to be flush at the front. Say if this was a door, for example, a frame and panel door, in most cases, you want that frame to be completely flush and the panel in the middle inset. Whereas if this was a support for the underside of a chair, for example, and this was a leg, sometimes you want that little step there because it provides a nice little shadow and sort of, I don't know, a little bit of visual interest to it. So before you mark that face side and face edge, just work out which side you actually want to be flush. For me, because there's no real way that this goes round, I'm just gonna draw it on the front here. So I'm gonna get my Buddha pen, face side and face edge. Now, the Jesus pen ran out. I've used it far too much. He is gone. Now, on a side note, I have found a supplier for these in the US. I have ordered 50 of them to, <laughs> to come to my house. So if you want one, I have a link up here going to my website where you can pre-order one for mid-December directly from my store. Uh, it was late at night when I did it. I w definitely was not thinking straight. But if you want a Jesus pen, you can now get one. That is for people in the UK and Europe only. However, if you're in the US, there is also a little link on that page which you can buy them through Amazon and I get a small cut of that as well. So. If you want one, buying one from me or through the affiliate link would be absolutely amazing. The Buddha pen was given to me by one of my viewers and who also comes into Axminster Tools in Basingstoke quite a lot. Absolutely brilliant, I really love it. But anyway, we are cutting a mortise and tenon in this video. I'm not talking about pens because I'm not a pen salesman. So face side, face edges marked out. So now we know that when this joint goes together, this face is going to be flush because that's where our face side is. And I'm not going to be able to assemble this component that way because the face side is on the inside here. It's not correct. We want the face sides and the face edges to be on the outside edges because then you can see them with your face or at least that's how I like to think about it. So next we're gonna get a square and we're gonna mark the shoulders on the tenon here. And I've said this a lot in previous videos. What's important is that we reference the square, the stock of the square off either the face side or the face edge. So you can get access to all four sides by using those two edges. So like that, like that, like that, and like that. So we're gonna square a line all the way around here to mark that shoulder line. So because this component is going into here, we're just gonna work out how far we can go to start with. So I reckon I'm gonna leave about 20 millimeters at the end. So this component is 70 mil. That means that my tenon is going to be about 50 millimeters long. So I'm gonna measure 50 millimeters back from there put a small knife mark, and then we're going to start squaring that line round. So stock of the square against the face edge here. I'm gonna put the knife in that little mark I just did, and then slide the square up to it, and do a light drag back, just to establish that line. Don't dig it in at this point, just establish that line. And then once you're getting a nice straight cut, that's when you can start digging it in and make a nice crisp line like that. So now we're gonna go around the other side. So again, stock against the face side here, get the knife in that edge. Roll it over again. We've got our face edge here. So again, knife in there, Up, drag back. And this side here, don't reference it off there because that's not where our face side is. We want to be referencing it off this side here. So stock against that, establish that line, and then dig in. 
Okay, and if you take your time with that, that's going to give you a nice crisp line all the way around. And when we offer that up to this component, you can see that that is how far it's going to go in. And we are left with about 20 millimeters at the end. So next, what we're going to do is mark out the mortises on here. So in order to get maximum strength from this mortise and tenon, what you want to be doing in most cases, if you're centralizing the tenon on this component, is dividing this component by three. Now it's very easy to think, divide that by three and then draw my marking gauge lines all the way around. But this will prevent problems later when it comes to chopping out the mortise by hand, because when we're chopping out the mortise, that tenon that you've left in the middle may not be the same width as your mortise chisel here. So what you actually want to be doing here is finding a mortise chisel that is very close to this component divided by three. So in this case, it's about eight millimeters. So what I'm gonna do on here is on that shoulder line, I'm just gonna find the halfway point, 13 on there. And then I'm going to get my mortise chisel, lay it down very carefully, centralize it on that mark so it's sitting dead center in the timber, and then simply put a little mark on the left hand side of the chisel and a little mark on the right side of the chisel. And then what I can do is get my mortise gauge and set it up so that the two heads are hitting both of those outer marks. So if you're getting close, you can see what this looks like. So what you can see here is the three marks. So that one in the middle is my original halfway point. And then if I lay a chisel on that, you can see that those two outer marks are the same width as the chisel so with the mortise gauge now referencing off my face side which is this side you can see that i've set it up so that one of them is hitting that far point and this other one is hitting that close point and you'll notice that the chamfers on the cutting head so those little 45 degree slopes they are sloping into the waist here so again on the far side you can see the cutting head sloping into the waist and on this close one the 45 degrees is also sloping into the waist so now with those firmly locked down i can start squaring this round to the end of the timber now if you have this marking gauge by veritas this is the dual marking gauge be sure to grab yourself a shaft clamp that basically clamps both of these shafts together but allows them to still move in and out of this headstock here it means that you can keep this exact distance between the heads but change the offset from the stock here i still haven't got around to buying one but i definitely need to in reality i do think this tool should come with one but as I know, it's just an extra selling point for Veritas, isn't it? So with these two heads, don't be tempted to push them both in at the same time. Focus on using them one at a time. So I'm gonna use the far side to start with. Really press the stock into the edge of the timber here. Focus more on pressing into that than you are pressing down. Make sure this line is really accurate. So light pressure and gradually increase it. So that one's established. Now roll it round and do this other side. So light pressure and then start digging in a bit. Now down the end grain, exactly the same, still referencing off the face side. So with these, it's usually easier to do the far side one because the 45 degrees on that cutting head helps pull the stock into the edge of the timber. Whereas on this one closest to you, the 45 degrees is kind of starting to push it away a bit. So really make sure that you are pressing that stock into the edge of the timber. Okay, now we're going to do the opposite side. So I'll make it easier for you to see. I'm going to flip it around, but obviously face side is now here. Right, so that's squared all the way around, and now we can just mark our waist to make sure we know that we are removing these rather than the middle. So next we're gonna just mark out the mortise component. So this is our outside face. That means the mortise is going on this face here. And when I assemble this joint, once again, I want these faces to be flush here. So I'm gonna be referencing off my face side. To make this a little bit neater, to make sure I don't go too far down with that marking gauge, I'm just gonna pop the other component on there, get it flush on the top and just give myself a little line so that I know I don't need to mark any further below that. So referencing off the face side, so now there's our mortise lines down the front. And what we've got to do now is put a little mark on the end grain here for the haunch. And what the haunch does on top is it gives the tenon more surface area top to bottom. It means that that component's a lot more secure in there. So if you look at the top of a frame and panel door, for example, once the tenon component goes into the mortise, you might see there's a little nub on the end of the tenon, which is fitting into a groove. If it was constructed with traditional mortise and tenons, that will be the haunch. And then below that will be the main tenon. So in terms of how deep to make this haunch, if this was a frame and panel door, you want to make that haunch about as deep as the panel goes into the frame. So usually for my work, that's around five or six mil, so around a quarter of an inch. So you can do this with a square and knife. I generally just do it with a marking gauge. So five millimeters deep, just put a light scratch in there. And now we can get our mortise gauge and continue scratching the lines down to hit that marking gauge line we've got here. So still referencing off the face side, roll it down and hit that there. And this other one, roll it down and hit it.
there. So now to mark out how far down we want that haunch to go, usually I do this so it's about a third of the height of the tenon. Because if that haunch was any smaller and this tenon sort of took up, I don't know, about three quarters of that component, as it goes into the mortise, it means that we're gonna have lots of short grain in this area here, which if the tenon was twisted back, it might end up punching up the end grain in this area here. So if I set it down about a third of the way, it means that this end grain still has a lot of support from underneath. Again, it's very hard to explain. You just have to sort of bear with me here and you'll see it all come together at the end. You'll be like, oh, I get it. So you can either mark this distance down with a ruler or a pen. I'm going to do it with another marking gauge. I haven't changed the settings on my other two. I'm gonna leave them exactly as it is because if I'm doing more mortise and tenons around a frame, for example, I want these to be exactly the same. So this tenon component is say about 60 millimeters. So a third of that is obviously 20. This marking gauge here is from Veritas. It has metric graduations on the side. I did a tool duel between this marking gauge and the type mark marking gauge. So if you're interested in that, the link is up here for that. There we go, that is locked off at 20. And then referencing off the face edge, which is going to be on the top of this component here. I'm going to mark all the way back like this. So light pressure and increase it around the end grain and on the far side here and then on the mortise component because they're referencing flush on the top like that if i flip them up you might be able to see the line on the tenon there it means that i need to reference the marking gauge off of here on the mortise so then just drag that back so now i know on this mortise component that area there is going to be my mortise and that area there is going to be my haunch the only thing you want to do now is mark a little shoulder to go on the bottom of this tenon so there's no possibility of the mortise showing through when we assemble this component on the bottom here if we set that mortise back three millimeters or so it means that it's not going to show up once this component is assembled so i've run out of marking gauges now i'm just going to do this with a ruler so this component here is 58 millimeters thick so i'm going to mark it down 55 millimeters little line there grab a square do it from the face side and then just square that up and that is where i want my mortise to end now I can simply get the other component on there, get it flush at the top, get this haunch line lined up on each component, put a little mark in line with where I've just drawn on the mortise, and then square that line across using a knife. I'm gonna use a pen for this because I can't fit it in the camera shot because it's just easier for you to see. So there we go. With that line along the end grain, I can simply square that down the faces as well. It's much more accurate to do this with a marking gauge. So if you have more of them knocking around, definitely score this line all the way around and then score it along here as well. But like I say, I've run out of them now. So I'm just gonna use a pen for it, but just make sure that you are marking out very accurately if you're going to do it that method. Okay, and now before we start chopping anything out, we have got one more bit to mark on the tenon here, and that is the haunch on the end here. Now, like I said, on here, this is going in six millimeters in this case. What I tend to do here is mark this haunch to be a little bit larger than it needs to be, and we can chop it down later on. So I'm gonna mark this to be seven millimeters and then square that across. So obviously that's a lot of marking out to take in. So what I'm gonna do is draw over all of the lines I have knifed on here, and I'm gonna get in close, and I'm just gonna go over again what we have done. Okay, so what you can see here, this is the side profile of the tenon. So you can see this part here is the main tenon. That is the haunch going up, which we are going to be able to see on the end grain. So that obviously serves a function and it gives it a nice old traditional look as well. And the tenon on the bottom here doesn't quite go to the bottom of the component. And that means when we assemble the joint, that little shoulder there is going to hide the bottom of the mortise. And looking at the mortise itself, you can see that this part here is going to be chopped to the full depth, so 50 millimeters. And that is going to accept the tenon here. And then this area here is going to be chopped to five or six millimeters deep, depending on if you're doing a frame and panel door or something, for example. And that is going to accept the little haunch on the top of the tenon here. But like I say, on the end of here, we have marked six millimeters down. And on the end of here, we have marked seven millimeters down. So this haunch isn't going to quite fit in there. It means that we can trim this down a little bit later. And obviously, when we put the components together and reference our face sides off one another, you can see that they line up like that. So this face side is going to be flush and this is going to have a small step on it. So it takes a lot of visualization. It will really benefit if you have lots of marking gauges. I've only got two to work from plus the mortise gauge. So most of you will be needing to use a pen or pencil for this. Just make sure that you're marking out very accurately with it. A knife is a lot more precise. A pen or pencil gives you a much wider line. So you've got to get that bang on the money. So. Let's start chopping out the mortise, I reckon. So in my previous videos on hand cut joints, I said that when you're chiseling down into something, you always want to be standing so you can see if the chisel is going in square or not. 
Now this is the case for most joints, however a mortise and tenon, what you actually want to be doing is looking down the mortise to see if the chisel is going in square this way. This dimension doesn't really matter too much because when it comes to putting the tenon in, we can tweak it and the shoulder lines on this tenon are going to square that up anyway. Whereas if we chisel into here, out of square, there's not as much surface area and it might start kinking that tenon out left or right and result on a gap on one side of the joint. So when you're chiseling this, sight down the length of the mortise, make sure the chisel is going in square this way. I'm gonna clamp it up between my dogs here and I'm going to be standing this way, looking down the length of it like that. So let's go. So another point worth mentioning here is when I clamp this between the dogs, I had the choice of putting the mortise this end to chop out or flip it round and have it this end to chop out. And this is where I want to talk a little bit about energy transfer of a mallet and chisel to wood. If I mortise out this component here with the only support under the component being this sort of sliding dog block here, I'm going to lose a lot of energy transfer as I'm whacking this chisel into it because there's nothing solid beneath that supporting it. Whereas if I flip this round and have that mortise supported by the solid workbench below that, and even better, you might be able to see it in the edge of the shot here, this is the through tenon that the leg is supported by underneath. That area there is so much more solid than this area here. So when you're chopping out this mortise, see if you can clamp it in a location that is above or near one of the legs on your workbench, because the difference will be massive. Working above here will be like working on an anvil. Working here will be like working on a marshmallow. Give it a go. I guarantee every time you're chopping into a component, you will notice the difference. So let's get in close and you can see what I'm doing now. Okay, so when chopping out this mortise, what I'm gonna do is preserve this line here where the haunch starts or ends, whatever way, and this line here where the mortise ends. I'm gonna preserve those till the very end. I'm just gonna remove all of this material to start with and then chop down to those at the final stage. So I'm gonna get my mortise chisel perfectly between those lines, make sure that it's not overhanging whatsoever. And I'm gonna start it about two or three millimeters away from that haunch. So I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna give it a firm whack. So you might have seen there how the mortise chisel was compressed back into that shoulder line, but because I gave it two or three millimetres, that line is still there. So now what I'm going to do is flip the chisel round, and the bevel on this is now going to push the material into that waste area there. Make sure that you're hitting in square, obviously, and give it a whack. There we go. And then move back. You really can do massive steps with this, so don't worry about being too, uh, too gentle about it. Okay, so now when you're approaching the bottom here, leave quite a bit of material there because what we can do is we can pop the chisel in there and use that material as leverage to remove all of this rubbish from inside the mortise. If I chop to that final line and I start levering off of that with the chisel, it's gonna start bruising it. So leave yourself lots of material there and just work it out like that. Okay, so we've pretty much removed all that out. Let's go again and continue chopping. So not quite in that haunch line, So that's pushed the material back into the waste area and now I can flip the chisel around again. Okay, all right, so I've hit the end. Oh, it probably gets wedged in there. Now I can lever it out again. So you might be able to see on here that all this levering really is damaging this back edge here. That's why I've left a lot of material there. Okay, so we're about to start the next lot of chopping now. And what I've done is stuck a little bit of tape on here, which is 50 millimeters from the edge of the blade. And that is the depth that our tenon is going to be here. So I'm using that tape as a depth stop. As you get to the bottom, it is pretty difficult to start removing this waste. So maybe just get the chisel in there, sort of stab it a few times, break up some of that waste. Oh, 
Okay, so now most of that cavity is established and now we can stand at the side of it and we can check to see if we are chopping down square to chop to those final lines. So I can still see I've got a little bit of the pen line there, but that's quite a big chop to do. So I'm going to remove some of this waste first. So now I can chisel in what's remaining of that pen line. Get it located and whack it. Okay, so there's that line done, and we're going to get it in the haunch line now. And then because all that's very thin end grain in there, it's quite easy to break that up in there. Okay, there we go. And try and avoid to use this area to lever it out, and also this area, because this area is short grain, and this area here, you might start bruising it below where that tenon shoulder is going to hide, so just be gentle with it here. Okay, so a quick sit rep as to where we are with this. This is why we chop the mortise before the tenon, because inevitably you're going to bruise these edges here and the top of the mortise is going to end up a little bit wider than these marking gauge lines that we've got here. And that's usually caused from just when you're levering out the waist like that and you slightly tilt the chisel too much. So yeah, the top third of this mortise or so will be a little bit wobbly, but down in the bottom there, that will be pretty much exactly the same width as this chisel. So what we're going to do now is chop the haunch out. So I'll show you how I do that. So to do this, very simple, just grab yourself a rip saw. I'm going to use my dovetail saw for this, but you could also use your tenon saw obviously and just nibble away at the back lower the saw down so these are techniques that I did in my video how to saw correctly the link is up here for that and just slowly work down to that baseline then just grab yourself a thin chisel pop that in there and remove most of the waste like that So that's the haunch roughed out. And then what I can do is pop the chisel in the leftover lines that I haven't quite cut to here. Get that in there, sight down the end grain. Okay, and now let's just get it upright. And obviously at this point, the mortise chisel is going to be a perfect fit for this. So I'm just gonna get that precisely between those lines. Check that the chisel's going in square. That is the haunch cut out. Mortise is all done, now we can focus on the tenon. So I've clamped it up in the vise at 45 degrees and that way when I cut down it, I'm only focusing on this line here and this line down the front. Whereas if I have it upright, I'm having to focus on this top line to start with and I've got to worry about the back and the front line. So what I'm doing here is working on two lines as opposed to three. <laughs> Okay, so that's done. Now let's just flip it over and finish off this third line. Okay, and now that has made a peak in the middle, obviously, so now we can just remove that by holding it upright. Saw goes in there, locates in all three lines. Okay, and now we can just cut the cheeks off. So get close to that line, but not right on it because we'll chisel down to it later or shoulder plane down to it later. Level out the saw. Okay, now what we're going to do is clean up almost down to these lines on the edges here, but not quite all the way. Essentially, we're just going to get these faces flat and then we can redraw on the haunch line here and this line here and obviously this line here. So to do that, I'm going to use a shoulder plane. So here we go, let's use a shoulder plane to clean up that face and inside corner. Now, like I say, we're not going down to the lines at this point because we're going to be fitting this tenon into the mortise. So just get it flat and clean for now. And if you want to know more about how to set up a shoulder plane, I did a video on what to watch out for when setting up a shoulder plane. And there's some quite good tips in there. So that link's in the top right corner. And now we're just going to clean up the shoulder line. So we're about a millimetre off from the shoulder line. So I'm going to halve that, take it down to half a millimetre. And here again, I'm sighting down this shoulder line so I can see if the chisel is tilted or not. No point standing looking at it from this direction because you can't see that angle. OK, 
Okay, there we go. And you could also get a shoulder plane along that line there, but I've got a nice crisp edge from a chisel, doesn't really need it. So I'll just do the same on the other side, clean it up. Okay, so that is all roughed out. Let's just draw the haunch lines back on now. Going across here. There we go. Now earlier I got a bit carried away and started cutting off this line before cutting off the cheeks. But obviously if I cut this section off, it means that I lose my marking gauge lines here. So that's why I left it on until this point, but now it's ready to remove. Okay, so remember here that this haunch is seven millimeters and the haunch that we cut in the mortise is six. So don't worry about the fluffy edge that this saw is going to leave. We'll clean that up later. Just get it right up against that line. Chop the bottom off, grab a chisel and just finish that bit off. Right down to the shoulder line. Right, so we will go for our first test fit now. Now I suspect, oh, hello. Now I suspect that it's gonna be a little bit wobbly at the top here because obviously that's where the, yeah, so it's a little bit wobbly because that's where the chisel is providing leverage. So it is a bit wobbly there. However, it is, it's grabbing below that, so that's good. So at this point, like I say, it's pretty well in there. What I'm gonna do is just check this internal wall here to make sure that it isn't diving in like this because obviously as I'm whacking this in, that's gonna start providing pressure on this top bit and it might start punching this end grain out. So we've got to check that. So you can just put the square in there, move it back until it hits something. And then if it starts, see that bit of movement there? That means that it's touching the bottom before it's hitting the top. So we do need to clear that out. So I'm just gonna get the mortise chisel in there again. And just take out that bottom section. Okay, let's test it again. That's better, right, so that's rock solid in there, and we'll just try this other side as well. Yeah, that's all fine. So we can just look at the tenon here and see what sort of marks we've got on that. So the tightness looks like it was along the top here. I can see that this area is very bruised and very burnished. So instead of changing the mortise, I think I'll just remove a little bit of material on that tenon there. So just level it out on that burnished surface and just really carefully pair through. Just be aware that you are following the grain here. Now let's try again. All right, that's better. So before we commit to bottoming that out in there, um, I'm just gonna take it out and we're just gonna check to see if there is any spots that really are rubbing. Because don't forget, we still have got to chop down this haunch to its required width. Okay, so now looking at the tenon, I can see that it is starting to rub here. You can see the pen marks are starting to bleed through quite a lot, but it doesn't seem to be too much. Top and bottom, that's where it is rubbing the most, but I think it should be okay. It's just a small bump there, which I'm gonna get rid of. Okay, there we go. So now I can see that it is the haunch that is preventing that from popping out. So let's take that out, clean up the haunch and see where that takes us. Okay, so that's pretty much down to those marking gauge lines now. So again, another test fit. Okay, so that's gonna go in there. That's gonna be a nice snug fit. So now let's chop that haunch to its final height. We'll double check the depth of the mortise to make sure that nothing at the bottom's gonna stop this tenon from bottoming out in there. And then we'll whack it together and see how it closes up. So just to double check again, that cavity is six millimeters deep. So I'm gonna draw six millimeters from the shoulder line on here. And we're just gonna square that line across. Then simply work back to that line. So now we're just gonna get a small ruler in there and make sure nothing at the bottom is gonna prevent that from bottoming out. Ah, so look, we've got a small high point there. That's hitting about 49 millimeters as opposed to 50 now. Okay, right, I'm happy with that. We're gonna see if this bottoms out now. 
Okay, I reckon this is going to be the one. So the only thing I have done here is just planed a few small chamfers around the end as well to help it locate on the bottom, just in case there's any debris in there in the corners that are going to prevent it. Oh, it's close. It's... <laughs> Oh, I know what this is. I know what it is. Hang on, hang on. See that? The haunch isn't quite plumb all the way down, so it's hitting this bottom bit before it hits the top and, well, it's stopping all the shoulders from doing it. So I'm gonna get the chisel in there and just pair that out, being careful not to hit the top because obviously that's where our nice crisp joint is. Okay, right, this is gonna be the one. So. There we go, up to the haunch. You can hear the creaky fit of it going in, but you can still press it in with hand pressure. So there you go, there's the finished joint. So you can see we've got no gaps whatsoever on the outside here. And because we reference the mortise gauge off the face sides, that means that these sides are flush. Now the haunch on the top gives this tenon more location top to bottom, so it's gonna prevent it from twisting over time. It's gonna keep it nice and stable in there. And now you can see why we started that tenon about two thirds down, because if that tenon was too close to the top, the amount of short grain we're gonna have in this section here is gonna be way too much. As soon as you crank that rail down, it might end up busting all the end grain up in this area here. So overall, very happy with this joint. The fit is absolutely perfect. There's no wobble in it whatsoever. And with glue, this would be rock solid. But as you know, I like to be honest in these videos. And at the bottom here, I did accidentally catch that with the saw when cutting out the haunch on the mortise. Some of you might have spotted that. It's not a mistake I've ever made before, so hence why it happened. But it's one for you to watch out for. When you're cutting that haunch out, just be aware that the front of the saw might start cutting into this area here. Otherwise, pretty happy. And there we go, that is how you cut a mortise and tenon joint and is now another joint that you can add to your woodworking repertoire and skillage, did I, I was literally about to say skillage then, terrible. Rock solid joint that is used so much in furniture making, framing and stuff and will be very useful for you in the future. Obviously, just take your time with it, start with the mortise, make the tenon fit into the mortise just by taking small little adjustments at a time and you'll get a nice squeaky fit like I have here. This still isn't glued up, but ah, there we go. So yeah, with glue in that, rock solid. You could also add draw bores to this as well. If you don't know what they are, I'll put a link up here to my workbench build where I was building this actually, where I was draw boring the legs. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. It's like a dance, the way that you Shake your head in full denial you love the truth Didn't get a chance to say it loud Your secrets kept you pushing down Disavow